Welcome everyone. What you can see here behind me, the building with the yellow architectural painting. Looks a bit like a tower. That is the Tübinger Stift, where Hölderlin, Schelling and Hegel all were roommates during their studies of theology here in Tübingen. So this is arguably the place where German idealism was born and formed. The three youngsters, the three theologians, as Nietzsche calls them a bit facetiously, here become friends and they here read Heraclitus together. One of the most uh, crucial moments probably in their lives is this reading of Heraclitus, more specifically of Heraclitus's dictum, which they try to understand that one is all and all is one, as we know from Heraclitus's fragment 50, uk emu alatulugu akusantas homologain sophonestin hen panta enai, not to me but to logos having listened. It is wise to say that all one is hen panta enai. It is this thought of the one and the many and how this can be articulated without falling into a one-sided oneness without it collapsing into a one-sided oneness and how identity and difference if you like can come together and be thought and be articulated in in motion in act two in enactment that spurs the development of german idealism of course together with uh, uh, on, on the basis of kant's transcendental philosophy. So um, with this I shall leave you to your own ponderings about German idealism and its nature and I wish you a good journey in learning about this most important movement of modern philosophy. Thank you very much. Oh, before I forget, because this I forgot. Of course, this attempt to think through Heraclitus in this way is also an attempt to think through again or to establish a marriage between the ancient Greek world where thinking begins and modernity. And this is what the three all attempt. And also, of course, attempt, an attempt to overcome mechanical understandings, mechanistic understandings of nature. But now it's time to go. Thank you very much.